Hello, Uncle Ted, we are Ice Cream Alchemist with Ice Cream Every Day, and this is Chestnut Ice Cream. I've been wanting to make this for a while, ever since I found out that in France they actually have a chestnut cream that's very popular, and they use chestnut puree in a number of desserts. So I was pretty excited about this, so on we go. Now, for chestnuts, I had such a hard time finding any chestnuts around here this year. I don't know if it's because of COVID or what, but I got lucky. I scored some organic chestnuts that were pre-shelled in bags at a discount store, and that's what I used. And so what I did was I got about a, a little over a pound here, and I got them out of the bag, broke them up. I used the scissors. You know, you can chop them up, whatever you got to do. We want to break them up, though, and uh, that way when we put them in our pot, they're not taking up as much space. And all we're going to do is just cover them with dairy. Just enough milk to cover them completely. And then we're going to simmer them under very low heat on the stove for eh, about 45 minutes to an hour. Now, I stir it once in a while to check on it. But one of the problems is it will reduce the milk a little bit. That's fine. It just concentrates the flavor. But really, we just want to soften these up as much as we can. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put these in a blender and we're going to puree them. Now... Because so much of the milk got reduced, we're going to have to add a little bit of milk, a few tablespoons here and there, just enough so that you can actually go through and puree the chestnuts in the milk. Now, definitely hang on to this because the puree you have left over can be used in a lot of different recipes. I highly suggest Googling chestnut puree or chestnut cream spread. The French have a lot of desserts using chestnut puree, so I would definitely hang on to this because it's really delicious stuff. It's got a very complex yet soft flavor, so I definitely hang on to it. Now, what I'll do is I'll take it out of the blender, and I'm going to run it through my uh, sieve here to go ahead and strain it and get all the big pieces out. I'll admit, it's kind of a messy job if you're not careful, so take your time. I did this in two different batches, so take your time and, you know, obviously, you know, make sure that you don't burn yourself so you maybe want to cool it off before you blend it like I did. But uh, once you're done, you will have uh, enough chestnut puree for a couple different recipes, not just this ice cream. Definitely worth the time. Once you've got everything strained, you can store it in an airtight container in the refrigerator. It'll keep for a little over a week. But like I said, I would definitely use it in a baked item. I mean, there's cookies, there's all kinds of recipes. Check out Mont Blanc. It's a wonderful dessert. And so, once I got that done, that's time for our ice cream. Now, for ingredients, it is the usual suspects. I've got two cups of heavy cream, one cup of whole milk. Now, for sugar... I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be using invert sugar. There's plenty of videos to look that up, but basically it's a way of dealing with moisture crystallization in ice cream, so definitely check it out. And then I've got the usual uh, one tablespoon of vanilla, half a cup of non-fat dry dairy, and I'm going to be using a cup and a half of the puree. Shout out to Sad Poppy for putting me on this invert sugar. Now we're going to go ahead and get our dairy started, uh, same as before, under low heat. And that's uh, two cups of heavy cream, one cup of whole milk. We're going to put that in our saucepan and then slowly heat it up. Once it gets up to temperature and it's you know, hotter than room temperature, then we're going to go ahead and add our invert sugar. Now i got to say, this stuff was difficult to work with. This is my first time, so I kind of made a mess. But as you saw, it's a bit like honey. It's got that syrupy texture to it. And so I made kind of a mess and I got it everywhere. Now as far as how well it worked, the jury's still out on that, so I'm going to do I'm going to use this a few more times and see how it goes. But once I got that invert sugar added, then I'm going to go ahead and add our non-fat dry milk. I'm going to do this in batches so it doesn't clump up and make little tiny balls that are a pain in the butt to deal with. Once I got that properly mixed in, then I'm going to go ahead and add our chestnut puree. Once that chestnut puree gets added and you get that whisked in, you're done. Go ahead and take it off the heat. Once you've got it off the heat, then go ahead and add your uh, vanilla. And so really that's it. It's a very simple ice cream base to put together. 
Heat control is very important with this, so once I've got that puree added, the temperature is turned off, and once it's off, that's when I'm going to go ahead and add the vanilla because it has an alcohol base. Now, uh, I've always said make sure to have plastic covering your ice cream base. It's very important because this way it won't develop a film, which is really gross when you have a film on your dairy, so this prevents that from happening. Now. I actually got out both my ice cream makers to do this because I just wanted to get it done. Plus, I wanted to do a little bit of a battle. And I gotta say, uh, my older Cuisinart is such a workhorse. It was amazing. It got this taken care of so much faster than the other Cuisinart, the Ice 30. So I was very happy with that. You know, I really think Cuisinart should sponsor me because I use their product exclusively to make ice cream and I vouch for them whenever somebody comes to me about asking for a good ice cream maker referral. Now this ice cream obviously it came out pretty well. It's going to have the texture of soft serve so like always you're going to have to put it in the freezer for a couple hours to harden up and once it does I have to admit the final product really was good. Now this has a very mild flavor to it but it, you know chestnut flavor is very pronounced and Honestly, if you like chestnuts or if you're looking for something that's just more of a holiday flavor, this is a good one to go with. Um, you know, I, I think maybe a little chocolate syrup on top would be wonderful with this. But folks, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And remember, if you're not eating ice cream every day for breakfast, what's the point of being an adult? Thanks for watching, and I hope you get to try this because it's easier than it looks and it comes out great.